this session really um, is for you to understand. Is that supposed to be here? <laughs> supposed to, uh, to give you a, a good overview of what the, the platform is. So it stays at the overview level. Simply, we have many more sessions uh, in the afternoon and, and uh, tomorrow as well to get more in details on some of those uh, parts. So what I wanted to um, basically explain to you is what is the um, API management platform for you? And we don't find that clicker. Somebody is going to be at the back here and move that manually for me. That's the option, okay? So basically, as this charming lady just said, I've been around for a while, about pretty much that number that shows up here. Uh, I've been working for about 25 years, right? In all kind of things. And I go to those API you know, sessions and, and conferences, and I see those young people that think they have invented APIs. Uh, not really, right? That's why my message here says, not that one, yes. So my claim to you is this is an API call, right? There's a well-defined interface to a program. There's an in, thank you very much. A well-defined interface to a program with well-known data, you have to pass that interface and something magic will happen in the background and you'll get a result. That's pretty much what an API is, right? It's just that, well, this is COBOL for the youngest among this audience who have never seen what it looks like. Um, and, uh, you know, it's been around for quite a while and it's probably the thing that still runs your banking transactions behind the scenes somewhere. Right? So that's pretty, you know, it's been there forever, uh, pretty much, the notion of APIs, right? Now, what has changed? What has changed really is the structure of companies. So what has changed is like, you know, when I started to work about 25 years ago, I started with IBM. IBM was like this big company, and we had everything within IBM. We had a travel agency, we had the people who were selling the pen and, and the notepads, and basically you could just survive as a conglomerate inside IBM without ever being, having to go out of it to find everything you needed to do your job. That, would, that has evolved a lot you know, across, you know, and, and, and basically, you don't, there was a, nobody will ever think now to have its own travel agency within the company. They'll just reuse whatever service is available somewhere. And what's really what we, we went to is from a completely, like, conglomerate and a single uh, coherent, uh, uh, integrated uh, platform, sorry, company into something which is, like, completely exploded that has a lot of different parts that have to integrate to each other, okay? That's been the evolution. The other evolution has been, and this is the line you can see here in, in, in black going down, is the cost of integration between the different parts of the company has been going dramatically down. It doesn't, you know, if, if somebody has to create a company today, in like one day, you can get CRM, you can get email, you can get like expenses management, like this, you can get machines, of course, and entire systems at, the, at your fingertips. It's just like one snap and you have it, right? And for a pretty reasonable cost, right? That's pretty, it's gonna be easy for you. And if you have to integrate across all those different parts, then the cost of integration is gonna be much, much lower than it was like 20 years ago, right? So what APIs have been uh, doing for us in, in the past, 50 years is helping that integration in a kind of a different way, right? So what I really see is what has changed from those times to now is that the integration is moving to the edge, right? If I'm taking that COBOL I've shown before, you have this big mainframe, okay? And you integrate to it and it's like deep, deep, deep inside the enterprise and you integrate to it from your own applications. Then we move to something more distributed with the SOA architecture. We had like a, a central integration backbone where all the applications will be coming and consuming their services. And this is evolving into something where basically you have all this information at the edge of the network, either because you want to open that data, that information to third parties, to your partners, to your customers, or to your own applications, or this is also a great tendency, this is kind of the core of, of a microservices architecture as well, is you have a self-behaving, a self-contained uh, uh, 
business functionality that is accessible through an API for others to consume. So th that has been the evolution, basically, across the time of like, what architecture and enterprise architecture looks like. Right? So really, the API is what they are giving us is this integration at the edge, should it be for our own consumption or for third-party uh, consumption. Now, what the critical piece here is that the APIs themselves are just the tip of the iceberg, right? There's a huge set of things happening behind the scenes. I was just discussing over lunch with uh, some, some colleagues and, and partners here about this, that yes, you know, APIs are fantastic, but in the end, when you call an API from, let's say, Netflix, you know, from, from an application, that call that you make at the edge of the network goes all the way back to some back end. And the same thing for any of you that want to expose some APIs. So really the API is what people see. This is what the consumers see as their entry point into your enterprise. But if you want to implement an API, you have all this other stuff <laughs> behind that you have to really care about, right? Because there's no magic. You're not going to take some SAP system and magically make it an API. You have to do some good design there in the middle if you want this to scale and work properly, right? So, so there's also um, kind of a tendency in the market right now. I don't know if, you know, some people say when you only have a hammer, all you see is a nail, right? So uh, there are some vendors out there that will tell you all you need are APIs. That's it. Or all you need are APIs and big data. Or all you need is an ESB, and that curiously matches to what they can sell, all right? So, so pretty much what really matters here from an architecture point of view is what does matter to you? Do you need an enterprise service bus? Maybe yes, maybe no. Do you need, can you directly take some data and expose it as API? Sure, if you do this the right way with the right architecture, you can absolutely do that, right? But think about, you know, the, the architecture that you're going to put in place and how it's going to scale once you expose basically this, those APIs to, to a third party, to a consumer, should it be internally or externally? So um, why a platform? So that comes down to what I wanted to talk about today. Why are we building and we're saying we have an API management platform? Because as I said, the, the APIs are just the tip of the iceberg. If we just give you the ability, just an API manager basically, that allows you to create APIs and expose them, we're only really covering a little part of the problem, right? So there's a core system, and maybe you know you have a completely architected um, system, or your services are ready, the security is in place, you have analytics, you have everything already, and all you need is an API manager in front. Perfect, no problem at all, right? But our experience with many customers that we're working with, and this is not the case. There is always something outside of the API management scope that you need to complete the implementation of your, of your uh, solution. So at the core of the platform, you have the portals, right? So this is the place where the developers, the publishers of the APIs will come and publish what's available, and where the consumers will come and find what's available. This is kind of the core, because without that, you don't really have API management in terms of managing the APIs themselves, like the catalog of the different APIs. Around that, you pretty much have three things that you must have, right? First of all, some place where this data will go. So I'm publishing an API, where will that definition go? All the metadata associated to that application, that's a, sorry, to that API, where will it go? It will go in some kind of repository behind the scenes, right? You need, if you have APIs, very likely what you want is to put some security in place to control who has access to those APIs. So there's a key component, which is like a key manager, a key server, which is a product that allows you to manage those APIs keys, generate them, help you uh, work with it. And then the third one is the runtime part, right? So the, from a deployment perspective, um, if we look back at that picture here, right, we have this API gateway layer, which basically is where all the API calls are going to come in to be intercepted and where I'm going to enforce all those policies at that level, security policy, throttling policy, all the management policy, basically. So those are like the three core things that you must have in an API management solution. But what else do you need? Well, the, the second one, and I'm really pushing this a lot, is the analytics part. 
So we'll, we'll talk about this in, in, in a minute, which is you really need, when you deploy, if you plan to doing APIs, you really, really need um, visibility into what's going on. And we'll see what that visibility can be. So this is kind of a complementary, it's not mandatory, but it's complementary to the overall API management uh, functionality. And then you have this outer ring, I would say, which are complementary to the core API management platform. So I'll give you multiple examples. The first one is security. So yes, it is absolutely critical to manage API keys, but that's just a very, very little part of the security aspect. If you want to expose APIs, you will have to manage the users. So the whole point about deploying APIs and having a catalog is you want to offer a self-service to the consumers of those APIs. Those people need to register in some way, right? So you need to manage those users. Now, m as uh, um, Alexis was explaining this morning, this is the time of me, right? Uh, a lot of our customers come to us and say, I want to do a self-service, but I know the people, the developers who will come and consume, they don't want to create a new user. They have like tons of users already. They have a Facebook user, a LinkedIn user, uh, a Google Apps user. So they want to just bring their own identity to be able to log in onto my API management system and see which APIs are available. So that's another extension, which is not in the core, but you will very, very likely need. So social logins, supporting that. If you offer multiple applications and your developer portal is just one of those, Single sign-on is going to be important across all those different applications that you offer. You don't want people to have to log in on every single application one after the other. We want to be able to offer them a nice experience where they log in once with their Facebook user ID, and then they'll have access to all their applications, all the applications that they need. Right? So that's from a, a user and consumer point of view. The other part of the security is the API key basically gives you the access, the, the authentication and authorization to access um, a special resource. If you want to do more advanced security, so imagine you want to say, Lorinda here can only access, <laughs> well, I'll pick you up on you. Uh, Lorinda here can only access a specific API during weekdays. So that's when she's supposed to work. She's not supposed to have an application that works on weekends, right? Can only access from weekdays from nine to five. After that, you can't work. Perfect, right? Uh, right. So that, that the base API key support can't do that for you. It only verifies that basically Lorinda has access to that specific API. She has the right key for it, and that's it. If you want to do more than that, then you need a more powerful security engine behind the scenes that can do this more advanced authorization. So that's also part of what of what we do. Um, so that's that's on the 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 security side. In terms of integrations, I was saying that there's a debate, a kind of never-ending debate, I would say, um, on, on the ESB deployment and whether you need it or you don't need it. So there's a whole like no ESB right now, uh, like tendency and, and, and push in, in the market, including from, from, you know, like Gartner has been also pushing that, just saying, just ride the bus if you need it or if you know where it goes, right? And, and that's absolutely right, which is you may have absolutely no need for a full-blown with adapters, massive transformation, complex uh, adaptation between one side of your APIs and the other side. And in that case, a lightweight adapter layer between your consumers and your backends might absolutely be fine and enough for you. And that's perfectly fine. So at the gateway level, which is in the core offering, you can do what we call basic mediation. So like, you know, the typical thing is like REST to SOAP or, or combining basic um, services across other to offer an API. But as soon as you go more than that, it's, it's, it's not a good idea to keep that in that layer, in the gateway layer. And it's much easier and scalable and basically reusable across multiple uh, APIs to do this into a more dedicated adaptation layer, which ends up being your ESB. So again, it all depends on your needs. It, um, very much against like saying no or yes, you know, and that there's like a single rule for everybody. It completely depends on what you need. So if you need it, fine. If you don't, then you just keep with the basic mediation and that's enough, okay? 
Um, and then finally, enterprise governance. So that's a really key part as well, which is like the, one of the key features of an API management platform is governing basically those APIs, their life cycle, their versioning. It's like having multiple versions of an API at the same time um, available to the users. But we've seen um, a lot of our customers have been telling us you know, it is not enough uh, because the, the APIs, again, are just the tip of the iceberg and they don't live in isolation. So it's not enough to have the APIs being managed on its own. The, the management of those APIs and the governance of those APIs, that's really part of an overall story, which is my entire governance across the board in terms of services, APIs, applications, projects, why not people? Because what I need as an enterprise is to be able to understand the relationship between all those different moving parts, right? If a service is changed, which API is going to be impacted? Or if a service is delayed, which project is going to be delayed? So all of this is related to each other. You can't just say, well, I want to manage those and, and govern them separately. You really need to govern them from a central place so that it makes sense when used all together. So that's also a critical part of the entire platform. So if we, if we look at the features at kind of the high level, I just picked like three main things uh, which really are uh, for us um, what the customers are, are putting as the number one things that they need for each of those categories. So basically, when you do an API management project, what do you have to do? Well, the first thing, you have to create the APIs. Right? So you may already have the services, you may already have the backend implementation, and you just want to define new interfaces. You may want to define multiple interfaces, multiple APIs in front of a single service. Right, just to adapt to the different consumers of that, of that API. So the API design and documenting an API and understanding what it does, and it's where we're, we're leveraging uh, Swagger uh, behind the scenes to actually do that, right, this is a key component of that design and implement set of features. Um, and the, the second one is adapting APIs to consumers. This is where the basic mediation can come in, which is maybe you don't want to present the same interface to everybody. Uh, one of the things we're working on um, if for, the, for the next versions is to actually allow the consumers to define what is the API that they need based on what, as a producer, you're offering. So that, you know, depending on the patterns and the applications they're developing, maybe for doing something very specific in their application, they need to always make this single, like, Three, three calls to three different APIs that they have to combine, and that gives them the real data that they want. And they do this over and over and over. So, so basically, one thing you could say is, well, at that level, what I want to do, I want to allow the consumer to say, this is the three calls I'm doing, so like, deploy this for me. That's my API, just for me. Okay, and then I'll, I'll, from my mobile application, I'll do a single call and it will return automatically the data I need, and it will do that three calls behind the scenes for me. Right, so, so that's like the ultimate adaptation in terms of giving an API that people want, like consumer by consumer, right? So that's at that layer you would do that. And, and the third one is collaborative design. So this is really a big tendency in, in, in what we in our customers today is to say, well, maybe I don't have the service, I don't have the implementation yet. Uh, what I want to do is start with the interface, only with the API, and I will create that API and I will submit it, publish it as like a, a mock-up basically, so people can start using it, giving me feedback through the social features of the system, and I will refine that API, and then once we're happy with the first version, I'll make the implementation ready. Okay, so it's kind of taking the other way around, uh, you know, instead of doing top-down, um, sorry, sorry bottom-up, go, go top-down. So it's kind of the, the key things that we enable at that level. The second one is um, secure and managed. So once I have my API, basically, what I want to do is now is to manage it. So what's the difference between a non-managed API and a managed API? Is I'm applying security, throttling, SLAs, you know, it's under controlled, um, I know who can access it, how, so that, that's really the key, the key part. So this is where security uh, kicks in, right? This is also where versioning kicks in. So this is an extremely important functionality uh, from any API management platform. That's a really critical requirement. 
you must be able to have at least, you know, either you're super, super, super good and super disciplined, as some people are, very few are, to be able over time to evolve your API without ever breaking any existing client. That is extremely difficult to do. Right? It is possible. Some people have been doing that. Uh, Facebook is a, is a good example. They have been evolving their API from the beginning and basically added a lot to it, but whoever wrote against that version like maybe two or three years ago still works. It's, it, you can do it, but it's, it's complicated. The easier way is to say, okay, there's a version 1.0, and then at some point in time, there will be a version 2.0, which will not be backward compatible with 1.0, and I will have to kind of move people over. So it means you need to be able to manage those two versions, both at the, at the portal level and also at the runtime level. So that's an important thing. And, and the third thing we've seen is like decision workflows. So the ability to um, basically inject some specific functionality and decision uh, trees, I would say, in some um, key things that uh, an API portal must do, such as self sign up like, uh, of, of a user. Maybe you don't want to approve everybody automatically, or right? you want to do something different. Or subscriptions, like does everybody has the right to subscribe at like the highest SLA if they want to? Maybe not, maybe you want somebody to approve that. Right? So all those uh, key things, interaction points, with your solution can be basically adapted through a workflow so you can decide what will happen uh, when this action is triggered. Um, next, we have publish and engage. So I have my API now. I have put control on top, on top of it. I have some key workflows put in place. I can control what happens when you subscribe, create an application, uh, or self-sign up somebody. Then I need to publish and engage. That means I'm going to expose basically those APIs in a store, which is going to be your store. It's going to be look and like, you know, like what you want it to be. You can completely adapt it. It can be a complete different store. We have a few customers doing this already that basically are using our internal APIs to create their own store on top of the platform, as opposed to taking the store that we have uh, given them by default. So that's another uh, possibility you can do that. This is where the self-service will be. So this is a critical aspect of building an API ecosystem. You need to make it, again, going back to what Alexi was saying, you need to make it as easy as possible for people to consume things like this now, right? It, if they can't, they will just go somewhere else. They'll go and find another way of doing what they wanted, right? So the whole onboarding experience for any API management platform needs to be extremely easy to do for your developers, for the people who are going to come and consume. So this is where this is all. Um, and also the social features. So this is all something we're all very... Uh, used to in terms of interacting with people today with Facebook and Twitters and, 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 and all kind of social networks, right? We're used to interact with people. And that's a key feature as well so that you can engage with those consumers you may not know if this is an open API to the outside world. And even if it's inside, you probably don't know every single, if it's a large company, you don't know every single developer who's going to consume the APIs and, and basically understand what they do. So you need that engagement level with them to be able to respond to their needs. Maybe it's a bug they found. Maybe they, they have some ideas on how the API can evolve. You can put some ratings and some comments. All of this is part of that experience. And finally, the monitoring. So this is a critical part as well. I'm pushing every single customer to actually do this. It's like even if you don't want to deploy our like analytics engine or anything the first day, make sure that you, um, you do equip your APIs to be able to publish all that information, publish all those events so that when you want, you can turn a flip on and say, OK, now I'm ready. I'm going to publish a lot of information to have that visibility into the APIs. But frankly, it is, for me, it's really core. Because if you don't have the visibility into what APIs are doing, it's going to be really hard for you to determine what's called the API value. What is the value um, that API has? Is it used? Is it not used by anybody? Can I remove it and nobody will complain? Actually, I, I talked to a customer recently. I said, they said, when something pops up in their data center, 
and they don't know if it's used or not, they stop it. They just shut it down and they wait to see if somebody is going to shout. And if nobody shouts and nobody uses it and they shut it down forever. That's one way <laughs> um, when you have the control over your applications. But, you know, more likely what you want is some insights into, uh, you know, what's going on so you can take some informed decisions basically on, on all that stuff. So what is um, just one, one more uh, thing. So you can basically deploy this solution anywhere, as uh, Sanjeeva was saying this morning. It can be on-premise. It can run in the cloud. We have our own uh, SaaS version now, our public deployment called API Cloud. Or you can have it as a managed option, basically, which is we'll run it for you. That's available for every um, WSO2 product. So I'll, I'll let you, you, you guys will have the chart so you, you can look at the next one. What I want to make sure you understand is, is the uh, roadmap and the drivers behind uh, the API management platform. This is my product management hat on, and it's important for you to understand. So the key thing is like, the more we talk with customers, the larger their deployments are. Uh, so it's like, it started with 10, 20 APIs, and it's like hundreds, and some people are talking to us about now deploying thousands of APIs. So the scalability of the store of the runtime is critical for us, and that's a key driving factor in the evolution of the product. Then this unified governance I was talking about. So not only you managing the APIs, but managing the entire set of assets I'm creating. Extended security, so make it really easy to plug additional security on top of the API management platform. And also adapting to third-party uh, infrastructure. So in the new version we're uh, deploying now, um, sorry, releasing now, you'll be able to kind of replace the security engine by another one, by a third-party one, so we can plug with, uh, you know, a competitor's product, basically, but th that's what customers want, and that's what they need, because they, they can't replace what they already have with what we're bringing. So that's a new feature of, uh, of version 1.9. Same thing for third-party gateways. So some people have already gateways, but they have poor API management around it, but they want to keep the runtime, but they want to use our... Uh, service around it, understanding the API value, that's the analytics part I was talking about. Of course, supporting Internet of Things, uh, so you need some specific functionality uh, in terms of supporting Internet of Things within the context of API management, that's how you interact with basically with devices. And across the board, we're really working really hard on, on user experience and making sure it's as easy as possible to use those products. So that's kind of the high-level view of it, and I'm done.